Welcome to another episode of Slarity Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at RGB headers and um, connectors. I want to try to unravel some of the confusion that people have out there. I actually built these two little boards fairly quickly to kind of use as a visual aid to explain um, the different uh, headers and that you'll face when you're building your system. So this right here is is the board that I made for the 12 volt analog. So right here we have generally what all motherboards use, um, which is voltage, ground, sorry, voltage, green, red, blue. And on the bottom is what Gigabyte used to do up until newer boards, which is voltage, green, red, blue, and white. So the white channel is not all that used, and to me it was more of a marketing you know, idea that Gigabyte had. And you're seeing in their newer boards, um, like the Z390s, they don't have the, the white channel there. So pretty much all motherboards that use the analog RGB, which has usually four pins, um, has a 12 volt green, red, blue, and you'll. It's kind of hard to tell because of the um, of uh, of my camera, but these pins are actually rounded, and that differs from the the square headers that you usually have on your motherboard. So motherboard headers usually have a square pin. This is a round pin, and um, this is an example of a um, square pin that I a square square. Um, female connector and it doesn't really fit in that well. So, but if you use a connector that is meant for it, it goes in perfectly fine. Uh, another issue that I think that people had with the white it channel is that when you try to plug in a connector, it's kind of too big to allow for you to connect a, a lot of the connectors out there that are analog RGB to a RGBW header because the white header, well, white pin would get in the way. So a lot of times people would bend it over or try to find a low profile connector or um, you get just go for five pin um, extension cable then just use that to connect it up to the device. Um, <clears throat> so this is again 12 volts so you're receiving 12 volts on these voltage and um, some people might be confused because there's no ground, but technically um, the voltage right here um, that's positive, that is a anode, and each one of these GRB is a cathode, which is, is a negative for a diode. So, and this is the example of a 12-volt analog headers. So again, all motherboards have really switched to kind of this standard, which is has been kind of the gold standard and still is for, you know, uh, for analog RGB. I actually built my home theater in 2015 and I used these connectors. So this standard has been around for a long time. So we move on to the more complicated and confusing area, the digital or addressable RGB. And these usually come 90% of the time they're, they come in 5 volt or probably more like 99% of the time they come in 5 volt. There's some 12 volt um, exceptions out there but those are very rare and um, uh, we're going to not talk about that for this time. So these are a couple of the popular headers that are used um, for the 5 volt on motherboards. So And also I put the Corsair right here. So we'll first start with Corsair. So Corsair kind of actually innovated, um, was quite innovative by using um, addressable RGB early in the game. So they first came out with the um, like their command their Commander um, Pro, and this is Lighting No Pro that they came out with. Then they have the addressable fan strips, and this is actually a, a RGB hub that I took apart, but I'll get to that in a second. So what they did is, I thought it was quite ingenious. They used this this uh, locking lockable um, keyed uh, header, and it fits in, and it doesn't come out. And that's one thing I do lo really like about this header that they chose. It locks into place because I've had a lot of these uh, analog RGB um, just fall apart when you're trying to wire management. So I usually wrap some um, electrical tape between any um, junction just to prevent it from actually coming apart when you have huge wads of cable that it might be hard to find. So um, 
I do like this header and it is fairly unique. It's fairly idiot proof because I don't know if you can see it that well um, because my camera can't focus that close, but there's a little key on it that prevents you from rever from reversing the polarity. And um, I've actually blown my fuses in this, um, in this device by plugging in um, things wrong because I have um, uh, different connectors that I use for um, trying different experiments and um, sometimes when you're tired and overconfident you reverse the polarity and then you fry it. So these are just simple breadboard um, uh, connectors, jumpers. Um, so that is, that's one thing I really like about the Corsair header. Um, so other addressable headers that you'll find on the motherboards is Gigabyte used to have this for their standard. If you can see, it's a little bit harder to tell, but these pins are thicker than these pins. They have the same pitch, the same distance between each pin on center, but these are actually thicker. These are the square style. And actually, it took me longer than I w would like to admit that to realize that they actually used um, square headers um, because... I didn't. I never noticed a difference. So as you can see, it takes a little bit of force to take it out of this old gigabyte header. But if you plug it into this, I mean, it's just there's nothing really holding it in. So um, this is what gigabyte used to do. Um, uh, there's potential to reverse the polarity, either you know, flip it around the wrong way, which um, I've never tested it, and I've always been very careful around my motherboard because my motherboard is a lot more expensive than uh, Lighting No Pro, and I've actually repaired these by replacing the fuses um, that blow and reverse the polarity for each channel. And I've done that more than I'd like to admit. But anyway, so um, as you can see, all these have voltage data ground, and the voltage is 5 volt coming in. Data is the data that's being supplied for the digital LED, and ground is ground. I forgot what, to mention one last thing. So to know what is um, 5 volt has a little keyhole under under the uh, pin for the um, Corsair. But um, switching back to the old Gigabyte. So I have this on my Z370 motherboard. And I've used it to test out fans and whatnot, and it works. Um, they use uh, These all use the same type of um, um, WS... 281 um, star, you know, a um, wild card um, uh, t type of LEDs that pretty much all these manufacturers use. But um, so uh, this kind of fell out of, out of favor, and it's kind of interesting because the newest boards, Gigabyte actually kind of adopted what um, I'm guessing Asus um, and MSI adopted. So I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident that Asus most likely decided to to use this type of style, where they actually it's the same style connector, four pins, just like the um, analog RGB, but they removed a pin, and they're using that kind of as a as a key to try to prevent people from re reversing the polarity. If you reverse the polarity on a analog um, RGB, it's not going to be a problem because a diode is. Uh, sends electricity one way um, under under most circumstances. Um, so reversing it is not a problem. But when you reverse polarity on um, on digital, it can be a little bit more problematic. So if you see here, like for example, you can I can plug this 12 volt easily into this, and obviously I can't plug it into that because square hole, uh, sorry, round hole, square peg. Um, so, well, what they did is they actually introduced a key into the connector. So if you see, that's it's technically four pins wide, but it's missing a, a pin. So that's keyed out, so you can't reverse the polarity. And, you know, you could probably short it out if you tried. Um, but the point is you should be doing this when your power's off, not when your system power's on. So it plugs in like that, and... It's connected. It's, you know, these are held in by friction, and sometimes they do a good job. Other times they kind of start feeling a little bit loose. But um, that is the standard that even Gigabyte use. And I think a main reason why this was adopted is, and I think the reason why Asus um, probably wasn't one that um, started doing this is because um, they're the they sell the most motherboards or the you know the the, the, the 
so just from the share market share, um, a lot of companies developed um, devices that have connectors that plug into this. So I think Gigabyte made the right decision and switched to um, something that would make it more standard so you could use your device on it. Um, so these are just little, literally like headers that I just soldered onto these PCBs. But yeah, so they all have voltage data ground. This is just a blank. And I actually cut it off if you can see. And um, so let's let's talk about a couple of things. There's there's this Corsair header right here, or sorry, this Corsair RGB hub, and you'll notice that we'll have four connectors. This is actually a digital. So the interesting thing about Corsair is they use um, a hub, and the way the way the digital RGB works is it works in series and serial um, data that's being sent from one item to another. So there's, you need some way to pass information. And so what they're doing is uh, the fourth pin that people get confused about is actually data out. So if you were to look at, if you can see closely on the strip, um, or even these devices, they have four, they have four um, uh, pins on them. Uh, one is ground, one is data in, one is data out, and the other one is voltage. So, and wherever you see this little junction where you can cut this cut mark, you'll see that one is data in and the other one is data out. So that is, um, so these look like they have three pins, but they, uh, you, sorry, they look like they have like, you know, six connectors right here, but like, Two of those, this and this are mirrored, this and this are mirrored, but this one and this one are different because this is data in right here and this is data out right there. So um, so there's also a couple other connectors that you might run into um, when you're using your devices. So this is called, they, they, refer, this, they refer this to as a JST. Um, whether or not that is um, uh, the the actual correct term, or is it just company like Molex is technically the company, it's not the connector, but people call the connector a Molex connector. But this is what comes on most um, um, digital RGB strips that you'll buy off the, uh, like you know, off Amazon or whatnot. That's not meant for a PC, and they're the same type of LEDs that are used on your computer. Um, but in this case, I actually made a little adapter for Corsair, so I can just plug it into into that, and um, that way I could use some strips um, for testing. Um, so, let me see, is there anything else that I can think of? Because I'm trying to do this all in one shot, and I think that pretty much covers everything I, I can think of right now. If you have any questions, I know this is one of my longer videos, and I just wanted to get this out there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post a comment, and if you if you have any suggestions of content that you want me to cover, um, suggest it, and um, feel free to subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this. I am working on my RGB deck still, and actually do have a couple questions for you guys. So I'm thinking about putting some RGB LEDs on the underside here, um, so it kind of gives a nice glow, but that will actually increase the cost per unit because I'm trying to, if I get these all made by a machine, you send it through once, but if you want to do the other side, you have to have it flipped over and run it again, so that adds cost. And also, um, I've been playing with the different types of headers that I use for these and connectors, so right now female, but I'm, I'm looking at using 45 degree male connectors, and they're actually surprisingly difficult to source, um, at least for a cheap price. I mean, I can find these, you know, straight headers, and even the angled the, the right-angled female headers for pretty cheap, but finding male right-angle headers is actually either expensive um, if you get them from DigiKey, or you know I have to buy them like in a set of you know 10,040 um, um, header length strips. Um, so it's just insane. Um, so I wanted your thoughts on that. Um, again, thank you very much. Feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day.